Hello and welcome to Cash in the Attic, the show that helps you value those antiques so that you can hopefully sell them at auction. Today we're hoping to unearth some treasures so that we can raise some funds to celebrate a milestone birthday. up on Cash in the Attic, at last an excuse to name that village. Oh, I can't tell you that. Do you really want to know? Oh, I see. Says, uh, Llanfad Pwyllgwyngyll go gerach um drobl Llanty Silio go gwych. I think. And expert Jonty is excited by some vintage boys' toys. But this is worth its weight in gold. At auction, I can't quite make up my mind about uh, our missing expert. Jonty's very negative. The seat was broken. Mm -hmm. oh. He's very truthful. <laughs> it's one not to miss when the hammer falls. I'm on my way to meet Pat Minot in Dulwich in London. And apparently her house is crammed to the rafters with antiques and collectibles. It's going to be a busy one. Pat is a very sociable woman and is joined today by one of her good friends, another Pat. Hey, this could get confusing. As well as having the same name, they're both 70 this year. And this is a clue as to why we've been brought in. She married Dick Minot in 1966 and they had four children. Well, sadly, Dick died in 2008. He was an avid collector and Pat still has most of his possessions around the house. Our expert, John T. Herndon, has arrived before me. He's been studying antiques for three decades, so his knowledge here is going to be invaluable. Good to see you. Hard at work already. Hi. How are you, Pat? Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. Who have we got here? Pat Blackler. So Stereo oh. Pat. Pat, Pat, Pat. Pat the elder and Pat the younger. <laughs> <laughs> Steady on now. That's how it's going to be, is it? So go on then. Uh, why have you called us in? We've called you in because we want to celebrate our birthdays. Pat's just had her 70th birthday and I'm about to have my birthday. And there's a group of ten of us and we usually celebrate together and we want to do it in style this time. So we want to celebrate our 70th but then have a real be no. So how much will that roughly be? Mm, up to up to five hundred pounds should do it, I think. Well, I better get to work. Yeah, it's a big house. Five hundred pounds. Why do you need five hundred pounds? We want to have a good beano. What's a beano? A beano is a bash, a party, a do. So you want five hundred quid for a good knees up, really? A knees up, yeah. <laughs> Everywhere you look in this house, uh, so far, anyway, all I see is books, ornaments. Um, what are we likely to find? Well, my husband collected everything from bus tickets to e even, you know, grid rubbings in the road and... So we should you know, be all right then? We should be OK. Do you think we'll get the £500? <laughs> well, we'll still have a beano even if we don't. Oh. <laughs> this party-loving lady is the daughter of an army officer and her family moved around a lot when she was younger before they finally settled in South London. In fact, she's lived in this house since she was nine. Oh, Jonty, you must be in your element here. Oh, look at this. <laughs> look at this. I've found something oh, quick. OK, hold on. Um, there we go. I'll put it there. Right, I'll put those there. There we go. What have you found? A little smoker's cabinet by the looks of it. What's the story behind this, Pat? I'm not sure of the story behind this. I think it could possibly have come from my husband's grandparents or... It couldn't have been, you know, I right, don't okay. know really. So Probability they, is. They had so much stuff, there are still items that you don't really recognise or You're absolutely or right. I, I don't recognise, you know, an awful lot of the stuff. You know, I'm just discovering again with you. So okay, that's the yeah. smoker's cabinet, go on then. So this is from the Victorian era. And in the Victorian times, smoking became incredibly popular. So in the grander houses, they created rooms like the smoking room. And of course, with that, you had all the paraphernalia to go with it. So the smoking jacket, you had the smoking chair. And as a consequence, of course, you needed uh, possibly a smoker's cabinet as well. So this is what we're looking at here. Let me open up the doors, these lovely beveled glass doors. And on the inside here, ah, we go. we've got the room for the pipes. And there should be, and there is, a little tobacco jar there. A cabinet should always have a ceramic jar to keep the tobacco dry. Heavy lid, often that can be completely sealed, so it stops the moisture getting in there for your tobacco. So you okay. can mix your tobaccos. And then, of course, inside these drawers are all the rooms for the t tobacco itself, probably yeah, matches, etc., etc. 
And look, it's just crammed. There's all sorts of goodies in here. What a, whoa, large. wonderful. How much are we looking at if we put it into the auction? I think we're looking at sort of 50 to 80 pounds. Wow. And I think that's a really quite a conservative estimate, simply because it's in such good condition. It's absolutely in, in mint condition, which I love to see. Made of good old English oak, perfect. And that should sell very well in the auction sale. Apparently Dick was a smoker, but never used this cabinet to store his tobacco. Hat number two has found some boxes that need a thorough sort through, and I'm looking for any recognisable names on these ceramics. But Pat number one has spotted a piece of Edwardian furniture that can go to auction. She thinks it came from Dick's side of the family. It looks like a whatnot to me, but John T advises that it's a cake stand, and it's made of mahogany. It has a slight split in the wood, so the estimate for auction is 20 to 30 pounds. Hey, Pat, how are you getting on? These must be Dick's old toys from the war. It's amazing. You open a cupboard here, you never know what you're going to find. No, you a no, here. no. Look at that. They're amazing. You've got, what, you've got animals there as well. Yeah. Cows, horses, yeah. a lot. Yeah. I tell you what, Jonty's going to love this. Let me see if he's around. Jonty, you around? Look at this. What you got? Toys. Hey. Toys, look at that. They look really old too. That's really good news for us. And they look, let me have a look at this. A bit beaten up, this one. Yeah. Dinky, yeah. It's got one nice. wheel missing. Yes, sad, but they've got some real age to them. What do we got here? This is really quite interesting. So this one here is a tin station, but looking at this box here, now just to take a look at this for a moment, a filling station. There we go. That's great. Isn't that fab? Single condition, yeah. isn't, isn't that? That's it's mm. perfect condition. This is a very rare item. Now really? You can just see it's made of pressed tin like that. Can you see? It's shaped mm -hmm. tin, painted, and it's all transferred. But this is worth its weight in gold. It's absolutely fabulous. What about all the rest here? You've got sort of farmyard animals and mm -hmm. fences and stuff and cars. Would you put it all yeah. together? Or? It all needs to go together. And looking at everything else, all the other collections there, they're in pretty sort of ropey condition, but they're all really old. Now, between you and me and the gatepost, I know of a dealer that has sold an identical station for, wait for it, £300. Wow. Just for that? Just for this little petrol station. You're going to have a serious beano. <laughs> but remember, <laughs> we are selling at auction, yeah. a general auction sale as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a massive difference between retail price, and top dollar price from a specialist dealer, mm -hmm. all the way through to this. Mm -hmm. So if we were conservative with our estimates, we should really see this rise, because it's the right thing to do. OK, the whole thing, how much? Well, I would it? put 100 to 150 pounds on the collection. Mm -hmm. And then let's see where we go. And when those vintage toys get to the sale room, will the bidders love them as much as we do? We start off with a healthy 80 pounds. 85, 90, 5, 100. That looks like it's going to be an exciting sale, doesn't it? As the search in South London continues, we're all still wading through the masses of collections in Pat's home. John T decides to search the spare room and notices some more toys. This time, it's trains including a boxed model of Stevenson's famous rocket, a boxed steam liner, and a box of Hornby Silver Jubilee freight. There's also track, loads and loads of it. This large collection gets an estimate of two to 400 pounds. I tell you what, Pat, I don't know where to start. This is like an Aladdin's cave of treasures. No. Are, are you the hoarder? I am definitely not the hoarder. I'm, I'm the nagger. My husband was the hoarder. No, and his mother was a hoarder, and his grandmother was a hoarder, so, and this is the result, I think. But there are books on all kinds of subjects here. Yeah, when the kids had homework, they'd go and say to their dad, because he was a teacher, and they'd say to their dad, you know, I've got... And before they knew where they were, they all had half a dozen books in front of them, you know, on any subject. It doesn't surprise me. Are they all here, or are they scattered around the house as well? Um, no, a lot of them have gone. You know, there's so much rubbish in here. My daughter-in-law said, oh, I didn't know you had a green carpet in here. <laughs> so, hey, you've done well. You, you know. can see lots of carpet yeah. now. I know. What sort of character was your husband? Well, he was a lovely man. Everybody said he was a lovely man. You know, he's a big man, and the neighbours used to call him the gentle giant. Well, I didn't realise at the time, because we just lived, you know, and, and enjoyed life. But I think he probably was fairly eccentric, in, in the other hand. Right. He read history at Balliol. But he taught maths because there were lots of history teachers around and he just thought, oh, he was a teacher, he can teach anything, you know. So history was his love, but maths what he taught. 
He was also into trains, wasn't he? Well, he loved trains like he loved China and, you know, trains he loved at some point, postcards at other points, <laughs> um, model soldiers at other points. There must be so many memories for you. Is it going to be tough seeing some of this go? No, um, because most of the stuff that I love isn't going. Like, I will not miss the China and I certainly won't miss trains. Oh, go on, Pat, admit it. I bet secretly you've got them running around the track every night. In the lounge, the other Pat has spotted a circular table. It's Edwardian and made of mahogany and looks in very, very good condition. No nasty stains on this surface. There's a little drawer in the decorative band around the top. Jonty tells me this is called a freeze drawer. Again, it comes from Dick's side of the family and should make 40 to 60 pounds at auction. Well, going by our experts' lowest estimates so far, we stand to make 410 pounds when we take the things we found to the sale room. So we've almost reached Pat's target already. But I'll keep that to myself for now. Pat, another collection. This time it's postcards. And everything we've got here is just albums and, and, and catalogue boxed collections of, of old postcards. So who's worth all of these? Um. Well, it's like all the other collections in this house. It's probably, you know, started off with my husband's grandmother and then his mother and then, in fact, my husband himself. So if, if you know you're collecting something, friends tend to give you things. So I think that's where they've come from, really, yeah. you know, is places like that. So, Pat, what are we looking at there, for instance? I mean, this is a, an album of uh, postcards from Paris, isn't it? So what's this one? Um, it seems to be a little... Oh, it's got an fuse. interior. Paris. Look at the views of Paris, <laughs> <laughs> the Eiffel Tower and all the other buildings. Look at that. That's fantastic. I've never seen anything quite like that. That's really got some age to it too. Now, I've been flicking through just this box alone and this box is worth selling by itself. All of the postcards in this box are of steam locomotives and some of steamboats. And not only are these going to be of interest to postcard collectors, but they're going to be of interest to people who love locomotives, you know, steam locomotives, and all those steam boats as well. And this whole collection here is all to do with the First World War. Yeah. So again, it's been properly... I mean, look at the detail here. I, look at I those love lovely embroidered yeah. cards. But th this has been cut out a bit. I mean, look at the workmanship that's yeah. gone into that, the hours yeah. that have gone into, into just that one card alone. Really absolutely staggering. They just evoke so much... You know, of, yeah. of the time. They are time capsules. Every single one is a time capsule, aren't they? So a lot of these cards are very desirable, and I think that we're looking at this collection between 100 and 150 pounds. Wow. You look a bit staggered. I am staggered. Every time you say something, I'm staggered. <laughs> it's a shame Pat's nine grandchildren aren't interested in their grandfather's collections, but it means there's more money to go towards her 70th birthday bash which she plans to have with a large circle of friends. So this is the, the partying gang, is it? Yes, it, that's the gang, yeah. Every, everybody that I've worked with has had um, uh, one of my embroideries, you know, for some occasion or other. Pat had it when she was 70 and Maureen when she was 60. And, mm. and the only one who hasn't had one is Annette. That's Annette. Right. There. And how long have you been doing this? Well, I've been doing that since... Uh, that must have been over 20 years I've been doing that. Which led you very nicely into an art degree. I've always wanted to do art, mm. haven't I, really? So I went mm. to this drawing class. So, so I went along. It's just Southwark College. It's just a little college up the road, and I'm chatting to the group of people who've obviously gone there for the art class. And then the teacher comes up and she says, can you help me get these easels in? So I helped get the easels in. And the man that I'd been chatting to then was in a dressing gown. And so, you know, and he stripped off. So there I was in a life class. And, and I thought I'd gone to draw a bowl of fruit, you know, or something <laughs> yeah. like that. But I, I took to it like a duck to water. It, I was a nurse, so, you know... Nothing surprises you. Nothing surprises me, really. You know, and I really enjoyed it. So I carried on with that class, and then I thought, you know, where do I go from here? And they said, why don't you do an art degree? So, come on then, Pat, uh, what do you make of her talent? I'm in awe. Absolute awe, cos... I, I can't sew, I can't knit, I can't draw. And I can't stand on my head, so... To have a friend who's got all this... Well, I do yoga, don't I? Oh, so, right, you know, um, I don't just do it at parties. <laughs> but I just I think it's wonderful, you know, and I, I feel part of it, really, in a 
funny sort of way, don't I? You know, I share a joy with it, really. Oh, that's you know, nice. Honestly. Well, I think we need to uh, raise some serious money for a serious party, so uh, we should uh, get on with it. Yeah. You game? Come on. Let's, Let's go. go.